Hey pups, Arby here, and today is another top 10 video about some of my favorite non-Pokemon related games. While Pokemon is my favorite franchise and is popular and was cool before it was uncool and cool again, there are some non-Pokemon related games I do enjoy, especially to this day. I can't remember if I made this list before or not, but I decided to do it, and if this is a redo of this list, well, then it was my choice to do it. A few rules before we begin. All games will be from various franchises such as Nintendo and Sega. No Pokemon or ROM hacks allowed. All games must be related to different systems such as GameCube, N64, PC, etc. Handheld, console, and PC games are allowed. And finally, if you have a favorite non-Pokemon game, share it in the comments below. That being said, let's get started! Minecraft even though I don't play the game as much as anyone else does, it's still a super fun and chill game. And it connects to Pokemon. This game is by far the most popular out of all the video game franchises and fandoms in the world. The game itself was a little over 10 or 20 years old. It even had an Adventure Time episode of it. And there's also fandoms within the Minecraft fandom, like FNAF Minecraft, for example. And believe me when I say this, whether you're playing solo or in a group, Minecraft is a pretty chill game. Speaking of chill games... Animal Crossing. A massive Nintendo fan favorite amongst the Marios, Zeldas, Metroids, Kirbys, and of course, Pokemon. Animal Crossing is what it sounds like. A village show with super cute animal characters like Isabelle, Goldie, KK Slider, and many more to list off. It's a super fun game where you run around your own town and explore all over the place. From bug and flower collecting, to fishing, to literally everything chill and fun about this game. It's nice to relax and calm down from crazy ventures from Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, Metroid, and other crazy wild games. And to take some time off to chill in your own little animal village. And just hang out and be the mayor and go around talking to these super cute animal characters. Okame. I've talked about this game briefly before on my channel in previous top 10s, but never talked about the game as a whole. You play as a wolf spirit going around the village and saving everyone from random spirits like the Kitsune, Creepy Prostitute Spider Lady, and many more. The one thing that catches my eye about Okame, other than you play as a wolf, is the fact that they combine traditional painting from Asian art and 3D modeling. The creators are awesome for that. The game design and artwork and animation in general for this game is beautiful. I love traditional Japanese paintings because the style is so unique, and to put it in a 3D modeling is pure chef's kiss. Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess Okay, kind of cheating on this one because it's a tie, so gonna talk about both of them quickly because I've mentioned them a million times before on this channel. The Zelda world is just dark. Dark in general. Majora was the darkest before Twilight Princess. Hell, it even inspired the famous slash infamous creepypasta Ben Drowned, and even got a 3DS remake. And then Twilight Princess came along and won the darkest Zeldaverse ever award. Plus, instead of Navi or Tattle, or was it Tail, with the, hey, listen, watch out, you get Minda. And best of all, you get to be a wolf in this game too! Obviously, two of the best Zelda games in the entire Zelda Nintendo franchise. Persona Q. Well, I've only seen Let's Plays of previous Persona games, as well as watching the Persona 4 anime, I've played quite a bit of Persona Q. It's a mix of Persona 3 and Persona 4, choosing which Persona verse you want to be in. I always choose Persona 4 because Persona 4 is awesome! And basically worlds collide. It's kind of like a what if multiverse game story, playing off similarly to past Persona games, with the characters having personas, battling different shadows in different areas in the Shadow Realm. I may not have anything PlayStation related, nor anything Persona related, but Persona Q was the closest I got, and the game is freaking awesome! Stardew Valley. Well, I haven't played this game much either, it's another very fun and relaxing one. Similar to Minecraft and Animal Crossing, but with a twist. You go to a new village and start a new life on a ranch. 
and you go around doing a bunch of fun stuff. You can grow a garden, take care of farm animals, choose characters to date and or marry, and even start a family. You can do similar things like that in Animal Crossing, like fishing for example. Even though I played very little of this game, it's super fun and relaxing. And the music is amazing! Undertale. You probably had a feeling this one was going to be on this list. One of the most popular indie games, this game not only has very interesting and super cool fan favorite characters, but it also serves some life lessons, such as determination is key to everything, there's no resets in life, and many more. I'll link a video explaining it all in the description. But the classic RPG animation, art, and style to the favorable characters like Sans and Toriel, and most of all, the music of the game, and just the entire game as a whole is amazing and wonderful in its own right. Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Okay, okay, even though this game has Pokemon characters in it, it doesn't mean it's classified as cheating or Pokemon related. Sort of. Okay, maybe it is cheating, but hear me out. I took interest in Super Smash Bros. Brawl when I first saw the cover art of the game, and I practically had to beg for this game. I remember getting it on Easter one year, and I figured it'd be a super cool fighting game for a bunch of Nintendo characters, but when I saw it had a story mode on it, you know your girl had to do the story mode. Basically, it's a Nintendo multiverse fighting adventure game, adventure if you choose story mode, with a bunch of characters, some even not from Nintendo, Solid Snake from Mega Gear Solid, which is either an Xbox or PlayStation game, and Sonic, which is owned by Sega, one of Nintendo's biggest rivals of all time, and all these gaming universes coming together, and even adding two of my favorite Pokemon, Lucario and Pikachu, Hells yeah, please. Five Nights at Freddy's. I know the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise is overrated and the fandom is still there, but it's also overdone and flooded with a bunch of new FNAF characters. But it's got a good storyline and has a more reasonable and calm fandom than most others out there. I'm looking at you, Steven Universe Homestruck fandom. Plus, even though the game and its storyline and jump scares have been overdone a lot. It's still a good game. And Foxy and Mangle are the best characters in the game. Prove me wrong. Lollipop Chainsaw. Most of you saw this coming. Lollipop Chainsaw is like a dark comedy zombie game. I didn't get to play it until a few years later, once I was old enough to purchase and play the game. I love everything about the game. From the costumes, to the designs, to the zombies, to the dark comedy, to the zombie bosses, to Juliet Starling being voiced by the amazingly and lovely Tara Strong, the woman of many, many, many voices. To the freaking name and title itself, Lollipop Chainsaw! Cute yet edgy, me like. Plus, I just love Juliet as a playable character, and just a video game character in general. She is my spirit animal, or spirit cheerleader, because she's got spirit! Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Regardless, even though I'm not the biggest fanatic for zombie games, Lollipop Chainsaw is my go to zombie game. Alrighty, that concludes another top 10 list. Comment your favorite non Pokemon game in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one, pups. Cue the outro. RP is out. Peace!